we're going to be looking at um, adoption. And to do that, we need to understand what adoption is. So the process of adoption is when a child stops being the child of one or both of the child's birth parents or under the guardianship of the state and becomes instead the child of one or two adoptive parents. That's, that's the official definition of adoption. Often it involves the transfer of, um, of responsibility from one set of parents to another. Technically, adoption actually occurs when the relevant state or territory court makes an adoption order. So legally, that's what's required. Um, if you guys remember when we saw court cases that's, that just had one party, this is an example of a court case that just involves one party. So they're the parents who want to adopt, but no one is against them. Question. Can one parent adopt the child away from the other one? Uh, I don't think it works quite that way. So I don't think you can adopt a child away from the other parent. If you're already a parent, you are you are a parent. So adoption just makes you the parent. It doesn't take the other one away per se. Uh, can one parent adopt a child from Africa and the other one not? Um, I guess you could do that. Even though they're like living in the same house and everything. Uh, I, I think you can do that. So you can have only one of the parents adopt legally. What you'll generally find is that adoption is not automatic. So if you have two parents, the courts are much more likely to allow you to adopt than if there's just one, because they will consider the ability of you to care for the child. Yeah. And that's why often you'll find that adoption happens in two parent households, um, whether they are same sex or opposite sex, because opposite sex, um, sorry, same sex adoption is now legal the same way that opposite sex adoption is as of about five or six years ago. Um, but one parent can still adopt if they can prove that they have the financial um, and uh, emotional um, resources available to support a child on their own. So it is possible to do that. Um, now the effect of an adoption order is that parental responsibility for a child is transferred from one party or parties to a new parent or set of parents. Okay, so you're transferring that responsibility. That means that the old set of parents no longer have the same level of responsibility. Okay, they're no longer responsible for that child. If something happens to them, they're not responsible for making sure they go to school, that they're well fed, they don't have any problems with neglecting them because they're no longer the legal parent. Okay, in New South Wales, that process is governed by the Adoption Act 2000 New South Wales. That's another piece of legislation you definitely want to remember. Okay, that's a really important act, the Adoption Act 2000. Now, who can adopt and be adopted? So these are some technical rules. An adoption order can be made in relation to a person who is under 18 years of age. But also a person over 18 who's been in the care of a person or people applying for the adoption order. So say you were uh, a foster child and you're over the age of 18 now, you can still be adopted by your parents. And that does bring with it one symbolic recognition, which is important, but also number two, certain legal rights in relation to things like wills or property. So you now find it a lot easier to go to court and say, well, look, they are my legal parents or this is my legal child. Um, if they die, I'm, uh, I'm the one who receives their property or if they are in emergency care in hospital, I have rights to go see them, things like that. Uh, is there a period of time required? Uh, I don't know if there is a specific time period required. I, I assume that that is something that the courts would also take into account, that if you were in someone's foster care for two weeks and then they say, I'd like to adopt them, it's... It's still possible to, if they're under 18, if they're over 18, they might say, well, why? Why are you seeking to do that? Um, there was actually a case in the US a few years back when gay marriage was illegal there, where a same-sex couple decided that one of them would adopt the other in order to give them a lot of the same legal rights that a married couple would have. Because it meant that if one of them died, the other one would instantly inherit their wealth. Um, the headline afterwards was um, gay marriage legalized, dad tries to marry son, uh, which was, you know, one of those, oh, this is, uh, we told you, everything's going to crap. You legalize gay marriage oh, and suddenly you've got happened. dads marrying sons. So the reality of it was, of course, that the reason they were legally father and son was because it was the closest way they could um, achieve that legal recognition. Um, the, uh, the other example um, I heard is that sort of story of a, a mother and a daughter relationship where, you know, um, Mary and Sandy live together, they, they care for um, one another, they've been together for this number of years, uh, but they're not legally allowed to be married. And then they tell you, of course, well, they're actually mother and daughter. They just have a sort of domestic partnership. And so there has also been a call to say, well, 
forget the whole idea of marriage, maybe we should just have a domestic partnership or legal recognition, um, which extends beyond just romantic uh, relationships between couples. Some people do have the sort of relationship that's not a romantic relationship, it might be uh, child, parent, it might be uncle, uh, niece, nephew, uh, it could even be friends. Um, who do care for each other, who have each other in their wills, who um, are you know, very, very close, but don't have that sort of romantic involvement, and some sort of domestic partnership recognition to provide that legal protection could be useful. Uh, let's move on. In New South Wales, a single person can adopt a child. So as we said earlier, single people can still adopt, as well as a couple. A couple is defined as a man and woman who are either married or have a de facto relationship, sections 4 and 26 of the Adoption Act 2000. Um, more recently, um, same-sex couples have also been allowed to, uh, to adopt as well. Um, in earlier times in Australia, adoption was mainly considered as a means of providing childless couples with a child. So the idea of parental rights it wasn't about uh, the rights of children, it was about the rights of parents to, to be able to have children. The focus is now shifted to the benefits of adoption for the child, best interest of the child. Always think about that. A court will order an adoption only when it is clear that adoption, rather than another parenting arrangement, will provide the safest, most secure form of family for the child. Courts are now more careful about entirely severing relations between birth parents and their children. Okay, so they're quite uh, reluctant to sever relations completely. Since the Reform Act was introduced in 2000, birth parents can agree to an adoption plan that provides for exchange of information and a form of continuous contact between the child, the birth parents, and the adoptive parents. In the past, you would have your child adopted out and you may lose contact with them entirely. You know, there's TV shows that follow adopted children trying to find their birth parents and sometimes being successful, sometimes not. These days, it's a lot easier to find them. Adoptive parents are now also encouraged to foster and maintain the development of a healthy cultural identity for children adopted from families internationally or within Australia from birth parents of another culture. So if your children are, um, or your adopted child is of a different ethnicity or religion, you are encouraged to maintain um, some form of cultural connection with that ethnicity or religion or whatever else, or country if they're adopted from somewhere else. Again, the best interest of the child is in place there. Next, right to information. One of the key reforms to the Adoption Act in 2000 was the removal of much of the secrecy surrounding the adoption process. So remember, it used to be very hard to find out this information. It was very secret. Procedures are now in place to allow supply to an adopted child once the child reaches the age of 18 of information about their birth and birth parents. Once they turn 18, you can then say, I want to find out more about my birth parents. The birth parents can also apply for details of the child's adoptive name and adoptive parents so that the birth parent can also have some information. Both the adopted child and birth parent can register what's called a contact veto with the Department of Family and Community Services if they don't want to be contacted at all. So they both have to agree to be contacted. One of them says, no, you can't contact the other. And that may happen sometimes. Um, FACTS also administers a reunion information register for birth parents and adoptees who do want to reconnect. And then we're going to look at specifically same-sex couples and adoption. Remember, we are going to look at same-sex relationships down the track, but we do want to look at how they relate to adoption specifically. Now, adoption remains one of the areas of the law in which same-sex couples do not enjoy the same rights as heterosexual de facto couples. So it's important to remember. Although, as in other areas of same-sex and de facto law, reforms have recently been made and more are proposed. It has improved, but it's still not on equal footing. Adoption is an area of state and territory authority and laws between various Australian jurisdictions differ significantly. New South Wales changed the law to allow same-sex couples to adopt with an amendment to the Adoption Act in the year 2010. It is also permitted in the ACT, Tasmania and WA. However, South Australia, Queensland, Victoria and the Northern Territory do not allow same-sex couples to adopt. So adoption is allowed in about half of Australia, but not the other half. 